Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of spooky music to coincide with tomorrow's Halloween. This video we're going to be checking out a Toho cover track, this one from the group Shinra Boncho. The song is called Unconscious Requiem and there is a content warning right in the title and in the description of the video it says there there are grotesque images in here not sure what that alludes to if you're the squeamish type uh, i would say look away put it just on audio put it in a different tab whatever um just you know listen to the song i guess based on the album art i'm going to wager we just have anime violence in here <laughs> I don't know. Let's dive into this and see what Shinra Bancho has in store for us today. Okay. That bass work is fun. The whole thing's bouncy. The dual vocal stuff. Is that a synth on top? Bringing back the glock spiel from the intro. A waltz? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, yeah. Very bouncy, upbeat pop rock. Lots of offbeat hi hat hits, which gives it that bounciness. Ornamental guitar hits in that quieter section. Yeah. Quarter notes, bass kicks, and snare. Lots of driving energy here. spatial usage on the uh, that right there the expanded vocal dark circus Kind of noisy on both the rhythmic and sonic look. That's a tone choice. The bass slide to bring in the instruments, that was nice. They use a lot of uh, those moments 
to separate the song out. That was a really nice place though. They spend so long using the silence with like ringtones and, and uh, uh, the modification on the... They spend so long conditioning us to hear those bits of silence between sections, usually with the ringtone or button presses or, uh, you know, the sound of a voice on the other end of an old phone. Um, that when it comes in there at the end, it, they only give us one beat of it rather than a bar or two. And it allows it to bring the song back in and have an unexpected punch to it. I really like that moving into the outro of the, of the song. That worked well. And it was all set up by creating expectations and subverting them within the track. That works. I mean, that's just really smart writing right there. Uh, you know, normally we start uh, this week off with atmosphere. That's usually the first talking point. Is it eerie or spooky or scary or anything like that ominous? This is, uh, this is not, uh, it does have some creepier elements to it. There's a lot of pitch shifting going on in here. Uh, there is vocal destruction, vocal layering, vocal effects to create something that feels, uh, unnatural. But as far as the music itself, the melodies, the harmonies, the drum patterns, the walking bass lines, this is just straightforward J-Rock. High energy, high intensity, very driving, very palatable and catchy music. There's very few parts of the song proper, if I could call it that, that lean into anything haunting. I'm going to wager that when we get into the lyrics, that's where the scary stuff is going to be. But also, there's a lot of horror tropes and uh, violence and gore and scary scenes, flickering lights and stuff in the music video as well. And uh, I almost wonder if uh, by the time I'm done with this, uh, analyzing the music, reading through the lyrics, maybe giving the music video another quick watch... I might end up enjoying this more as a multimedia project than as a purely sonic thing. That's not to say that I wouldn't enjoy the song. It's just the song feels very distant from everything else. We have like this very bright. Uh, I love pop rock. I love poppy J rock. All this works really well for me. But uh, there seems to be a great divide between the topics and themes sung about and that the video goes in the direction of and, and the music itself. Um, and I feel like that division makes more, it makes less, uh, it, it works better, let me put it that way, uh, with the video alongside. That's my hypothesis right here, not having read the lyrics or rewatched the music video yet. Um... But a lot of that comes down to just how straightforward and bouncy and fun the music is. Uh, the guitars give us really cool mel melody lines. The bass has fantastic tone and these cool moving ideas. It's one thing that I really love about J-Rock that I wish the Western world of rock would pick up on is bringing jazzier bass lines into the music. It's not even necessarily about bringing jazzy harmony in. It's just allow the bass to do what it does in the jazz world, which is contribute to the song beyond pedal tones or playing the same thing the guitar is. The bass, it's, it's its own instrument. 
And in a lot of rock bands, it's your only bass instrument. You know, we down tune guitars and we can get some really low tones out of them, but nothing's going to get into the same area. I mean, you can really down tune and, and add like extra, you get an eight string guitar. Yeah, I suppose you might be able to get into some bassier tones, but most rock bands with a six string guitar aren't getting to the range the bass is. Let it do what it needs to do down there. Don't make it a copy of the, I'm ranting, let's get off this topic. <laughs> the bass is doing awesome stuff. As always in a lot of J-Rock. Love that stuff. Um, the drummer. Super upbeat. Super bouncy. Lots of energy. Uh, the entire verse has an offbeat semi-open hi-hat sound. Which creates a very bouncy feeling. It has these minor accent points between all of the beats. Which gives it a lot of forward energy. Um, and then there's just a lot of playing of the snare and bass in that faster tempo on those downbeats as it is but there's other sections throughout the song the pre-chorus in particular uh, where we get quarter note bass and snare hits just both of them hitting all the time every beat just blah 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 very high energy especially when you mix in some cymbal work alongside that the vocals are very energetic, very high energy. They are bright. They are electric. Um, they have a specific uh, tonality to them that is very forward placed. It's it's driving. Everything in the song is about getting to that next moment, whether it's the speed or the tone or uh, the, the phrase itself that the instrument is playing. Everything about it feels rushed in a, a good way. Normally when you say rushed or rushing, that's that's bad. You're playing too fast. Um, but it just feels like it has a destination in mind and it's ready to get there. I don't feel like the song is poorly paced. In fact, honestly, they crammed a lot of stuff into five minutes and maybe it could have been a little longer. <laughs> uh, but I think generally it, it works from start to finish. It's just, it's a very brisk pace. You really have to keep up with it. It will leave you behind rather quickly. And so all of this paints the picture of a song that's just very happy and bouncy. Uh, harmonically, there isn't a, a lot of darkness in here at all. But that's not to say that the song is just bright and cheery and energetic. There's a dark side to the song in mostly the transitions. And this is kind of hit and miss for me. The, transi the transitions end up feeling outside of the music at times. Uh, we use a lot of silence. There's breaks here where no instruments play. Uh, and we tend to see extra sounds, stuff outside of the band. As I mentioned, we have dial tones. We have the tone of pushing a button on a phone. We have the sound of voices speaking through phones. A little bit of that uh, compression and, and low fidelity sound on the vocals. Um, a lot of this just feels secondary to the music. It's not musical in nature. It's sort of a narrative transition between ideas. And for that reason, it kind of feels separated from everything. But it also makes the sections feel separated from each other too. Almost as if we've turned a page and it, instead of continuing the story on, it says chapter two. And that feels like... Uh, it feels like a starting point slash stopping point. I don't know if anybody else is like this when you're reading a book, though. You can't stop mid-chapter. You have to read until the chapter's over. Because there's just something really nice about stopping and then next time you pick the book up, starting at the beginning of a self-contained-ish area. That's what the sections of this song end up feeling like. I don't think any, you know, I don't think the chorus or the verse really stand on their own too well. But unlike most songs where they kind of blends together to being parts of the song, these end up feeling like smaller ideas within a larger. And I think it's primarily because of these transition points that feel like hard stopping points, hard starting points. It almost resets the flow of the entire song in a way that feels like we could start in the chorus if we wanted to and not really lose much. Context, sure, but flow? No, not really. We've disrupted that already. 
And so instead of feeling like uh, a full song where everything is unified and needed to for, you know, for understanding, there are very few songs I think you could start in the middle of and kind of enjoy them. But this one does because it stops for so long, so hard every couple of minutes, or I guess every minute or so that, um, uh, I don't know, it just feels like ends. It's kind of wild because these are the moments that feel the most tense that thematically line up with what I assume the lyrics are about and what the video was about. So I don't know if I'd necessarily want to take them out. They have narrative purpose to them, but they kind of don't have musical one and it disrupts the, the song in a way that from a musical perspective, I would not have done. It's a, it's a gutsy decision. I think, I don't know if it paid off. I'm still kind of 50, 50 on it. It's, it's cool, but eh, it's part of the reason why I think I wouldn't want to listen to this without the music video. <laughs> But there is also the bridge. As far as being more thematically appropriate, I liked this section. It was kind of eerie, creepy. They got rid of a lot of the high energy movement for a slower, uh, less stacked, less layered section. Um, we got rid of the bright, poppy chordal work and melodies for something a bit moodier and heavier. Uh, and the tempo change, atmosphere change, and even production change shifting to a single spoken word vocal, not really high up in range, not really energetic and delivered, kind of low energy, more of a comfortable range. And then also bringing in those eerie dyads with the vocals on the outsides harmonizing with the center one. All of this creates a very eerie, spooky uh, idea. But it also feels so different from the rest of the song that much like the transitions it's tough for me to uh, understand it as a whole it's such a departure uh, does it work maybe i enjoyed the contrast of it um and it's see here's the thing right i'm not a huge fan of massive shifts like this but i have begun to sort of enjoy some K-pop groups that do a lot of this in their music where they will have high energy pop followed by something a bit more biting followed by a rap section with some trap drums and then back to like the high energy pop chorus and then like I, I don't know something about just the drastic shifts really work for me and I, I don't know why here I'm kind of iffy on it. I do like the high contrast of it. I think jumping to this idea is a massive, uh, like a, a palate cleanser, taste reset. And it is a cool idea in and of itself, but I think it is a combination of the, the bridge with the transitions that the whole thing just kind of falls apart. A series of vignettes, possibly. Um, and maybe from, well, hmm. Is it about perspective then? Because there are certainly novels I don't like because they jump around a lot in, in perspective, in time. But I, I do like anthologies. A bunch of smaller vignettes. Uh, short stories that all fit together on a larger whole. Even though tonally and thematically and a bunch of other writing ways, they're all vastly different. They do come together over some sort of larger theme. So what if I view this as a vignette of musical narratives? I don't know. I don't think I've listened to anything with that perspective. And it's going to take me a little bit of time, I think, to develop uh, an opinion on that. But I do think there's something here that grabs at me. I don't dislike it. I just don't know how to understand it yet. It's written in a way I'm not familiar with, and it's hard to put into words. It might just be something that needs to grow on me. Maybe another listen would do me well on it. But overall, in general, I, I do 
I do like the song. The high energy J-Rock stuff is great. The vocal work is fantastic. I love the variety of vocal sounds that come out of this. The production is amazing. Seriously, the, the placement of all these instruments, the balancing of everything, the layering up that we get, um, the way that every instrument comes together as a whole but is so distinctly heard on their own as well. It's a really great job of spacing everything out but ensuring that it feels like a song and not just a bunch of disparate instruments. Um, all of the different techniques used to create the different atmospheres and, and tones and textures throughout the song. The production is top-notch. The writing is fun and catchy but has elements of darkness to it. It really is just the flow and structure of it that is a little wild to me because every moment outside of those is a treat for the ears. I'm going to read some lyrics for this um, and then we'll talk about that. As usual with this Toho stuff, I have no idea what I'm looking at lyrically. Um, I, I kind of had one idea about the song at the beginning, but by the third chorus, I have a different read on it. And that's because every chorus has different lyrics to it. The story is linear, but musically it's told in cycles. But the end of it is about... Uh, two people becoming one. Um, it, it asks, am I Mary or what was the other person? I don't know. I should have wrote... Like type the lyrics out because I do have Google Translate and Deep L up here, but they're not as good as the ones in the music video itself. But of course, those are temporal. The, the lyrics are tied to time, um, and there's a lot of lyrics in here, and they move pretty fast. But uh, yeah, basically, there is there's two people in this body, or something like that. Uh, and she says, am I Mary or am I someone else? But it doesn't really matter. Uh, it says, you know, why would you judge me? Why would you give me a bad ending? Uh, maybe justice and injustice are the same thing or two sides of the same coin or something about that. Uh, and it seems to be about somebody who's divided body and soul, where physically there might be one person, but... Uh, you know, spiritually, they are another person. But the rest of the song doesn't really tell me much about that. I don't think uh, the, the the bridge does talk a little bit about uh, being torn and joined and rejoined in some of this. So it kind of leads into that. But everything up until that point seems to be about... Um, a person who constantly is uh, looking over their shoulder. Maybe they're a bit paranoid about things. Talks about being at a dimly lit intersection at two in the morning, hearing voices around you. There's gossiping. Uh, the second verse even has more about this, about, you know, who spread the rumors and stuff like that. Um... And it all kind of alludes to the idea of this hidden world, a world of illusion. Uh, what did they call it specifically? Here's another time that I'm just going to end up wasting. <laughs> oh, a hallucinatory world. That's what they used in the music video. So... Again, I don't, I don't really know how all of this ties together. The person who's seemingly being uh, bullied uh, by rumors being passed around about them, feeling uh, traumatized, but also paranoid, and then eventually being attacked by this other soul that wants into their body and... I'm trying to like pair all this back to the music video and some of the more intense scenes there. 
the concept of the phone. I'm not sure how that works into all of this. Uh, payphone was used frequently in the music video and the sound of dial tones and uh, you know, vocal compression that sounds like old phones was used in places too. I don't, I don't know how all of this works. Um, so I'm going to leave this up to the Toho fans. Because y'all always do a fantastic job with this. Let me know what context is going on here. And what this story is supposed to be about. What what I'm just completely missing here. Due to me staring at three different translations. I mean that's not helping either. <laughs> but I am probably missing context about these characters. Right? Uh, so yeah. Uh, you know. Also if you just want to give me your thoughts and opinions about the song itself, maybe your interpretation of it, even if you don't know the lore behind the characters, please, you know, just put all that stuff in the comment section under the video. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for this one. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. We're going to continue on with Spooky Week, seeing what we're going to find on Halloween. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.